<laughs> the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> the makers of Johnson's Wax for Home and Industry present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. <laughs> House cleaning in any year is certainly nothing to write poems or songs about. But in a year like this one, when we're all so busy and there's less help around, any shortcut in the work is most welcome. If your floors, furniture, and woodwork have been regularly protected during the year with Johnson's Wax, you'll know right away what I mean. You'll understand how much easier it is to do a thorough job of cleaning than it was before you adopted wax housekeeping. Dirt just doesn't stick to a wax surface. Woodwork and windowsills that have been waxed don't get nearly as dirty and are ever so much easier to clean. And if you've Johnson waxed your accessories, picture frames, lampshades, ornaments, pantry shelves, just to mention a few, then you've eliminated much of the drudgery of spring house cleaning. If you haven't been using Johnson's wax to protect and beautify your home, then this is a mighty good time to begin. Johnson's wax comes in three convenient forms, paste, liquid, and the cream wax, especially formulated for furniture and woodwork. Of those two men with big bags on their backs who bring you things, Santa Claus and the mailman, the mailman has about 300 more chances a year to surprise you. Like just now, when he is approaching 79 Wistful Vista with a special delivery letter in his hand. All unbeknownst to Fibber McGee and Molly. What were your plans for today, dearie? Oh, I don't know. thought I might drop in at the Elks. Then go past the cigar store for a minute and see who the guys have elected the next president. <laughs> Maybe stop at the bank on my way home. At the bank? Blood Bank or First National? Hmm. Blood Bank? Who's got any money? <laughs> well, I was just thinking of it. Come in. Oh, good morning, mailman. Morning. Is your spouse in the house? <laughs> <laughs> if you mean is my guy standing by, yes, he is. McGee, the mailman, wants to see you. Oh. What's on your mind, my little civilian sad sack? <laughs> What's on your mind? And haven't we met before someplace? Sonny. What? I said, Sonny. I used to meet you frequently when I was checking sodas at Kramer's drugstore. Remember? Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. How come you left Kramer's to deliver mail, bud? Well, Washington don't seem to consider checking sodas an essential industry. Delivering mail is an essential industry. <laughs> So forthwith, and without more ado, I am now a mailman and essential industry. And here's a special delivery for you. Oh, much obliged. Are you going back to Kramer's drugstore after the war, son? Yeah, probably. Huh? They <laughs> says probably. What do you mean, probably? I mean probably. P-R-O-B-A-B-L-Y. Probably. <laughs> Well, much obliged for the letter, bud. I'll see you again. Hey, wait a minute. You'll have to sign for... What? <laughs> now, what's the matter? Don't I articulate the thing? <laughs> I says you'll have to sign for... <laughs> he means weasel have to sign for it, Molly. <laughs> Not weasel, just usel. <laughs> Okay, just measles. <laughs> Where do I sign it, bud? <laughs> bomb line. Which line? Bomb, bomb. <laughs> Look, B O T T O M, bomb. Oh, well, there you are, bud. Thanks. It's okay, all of these weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the letter from, dearie? I don't. Well, I'll be. Hey, look. It's from my cousin, Roy McGee, in Portland, Oregon. Oh? Last time I heard from that guy was in 1930, and he wanted to borrow 20 bucks. Well, times are better now. Maybe he wants to borrow 100. Yeah. 
And you get the same reply he got in 1930. Which was for the what? Well, I can't spell it. It's just a noise you make with your tongue. <laughs> now, let's see. Have a look here. Dear Tribbert. I don't know whether you put some much to see us here. And your wife was sent to us in Portland here. See, here in Portland, Oregon. Take complete charge of them. Oh, my gosh. Oh, this is wonderful. This is marvelous. Well, that's nice. Someday, when we're walking hand in hand up some quiet country lane in the hush of the evening, maybe you'll give me just a tiny little hint of what it's all about. Not that I want to be Snoopy, sweetheart. Why, it's from my cousin Roy. He wants us to come to Portland, Oregon and live in his house this summer. Yeah? Seems he owns a string of canneries. Wants me to take complete charge of them. He says if I make good, he'll turn one of them over to me. What do you know about the canning business? Anything Roy McGee could learn in 15 years, I can learn in two days. <laughs> boy, oh boy, imagine me in charge of six canning factories. What do you suppose he can? I don't know. Besides you, when he finds out how much you don't know about canning. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me see. Portland, Oregon. That's salmon and tuna fish country. And cherries. Tuna fish and cherries? Mm. Who'd eat a combination like that? <laughs> we wouldn't can them together. Hey, maybe that wouldn't be so bad. I've seen worse combinations in tea room salads. <laughs> Tuna fish and cherries. Oh, I, oh, well, we'll see about that later. <clears throat> Much later. First thing we got to do is sell this house. Sell this house? Oh, now, McGee. Got to make a clean break, baby. Can't run a canning plant in Portland, Oregon, and keep my other pants hanging in Whistle Vista. <laughs> <laughs> got to put the house up for sale. Hand me the phone. Oh, dear, you're so impulsive. Here. Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me the wish for Mr. Real Estate and escrow. Oh, is that you, Mert? Oh, dear. <laughs> How's every little thing, Mert? Is they? Eh? What's say, Mert? Sydney, the grocery boy. He did, eh? Did she scream? Did who scream, McGee? Mert's kid sister. Why should she scream? Sid kissed her. Oh. <laughs> What's say, Mert? No, let's not try it again. Okay, I'll call later. Just going to put the house up for sale. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Going to Portland, Oregon, Mert. Yeah. Going in the canning business. Canning business. Yeah. Don't say anything about it yet, Mert. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Real estate office is busy. Oh, dear. I love that business about telling Myrtle to keep it quiet. Mm -hmm. That girl spills more beans than a Navy cook in a hurricane. <laughs> I know that, Tootsie. And inside of three hours, everybody in town will know we're moving to Portland. Save's making a formal announcement. I see. She's a one-woman secret service with no secret. Mert couldn't keep a secret if she was blindfolded, gagged, bound, and buried under 40 feet of cement. No. <laughs> when she was given the gift to Gab, she took it back and got a larger size. Yeah. <laughs> that kid collects more wrong dope than a narcotic squad, and to her, the word truth is just part of a radio show called And Consequences. Yeah. <laughs> Mert means well, but her sound wasn't wired for brains. And she uses green lipstick so her mouth won't have to stop. Oh. She's the only girl known to medical science whose tongue has worn out three faces. Oh, dear. The only reason they gave her that job on the ground floor of the telephone exchange was because they knew Mert could never run down. <laughs> she was vaccinated with a... Oh. Billy Mills and the orchestra play Here It Is Monday.
Mason is a 197 almanac. Yeah. She makes more noise and less sense than a broken record of a Japanese lecture on flower. You're races. right. She can take a veiled hint and build it up into a three-act play with 12 scenes and an oleo. She's the kind that burns the scandal at both ends and she gushes like a broken water main. Besides that, she talks too much. <laughs> Oh, dear. Well, I guess that takes care of Myrtle. You betcha. I hope you never sit down and start really analyzing my qualities, dearie. I did that long ago. It is? And you come out of it a very noble character. Oh, my. <laughs> <sighs> Shall I try that again? <laughs> now, let me see. Oh, yeah, this wire to Roy. I, I still think you're rushing into something you're pretty ignorant of, dearie. Hmm? You don't know anything about the canning business. So what? Did Eisenhower know anything about Africa? Did Bob Hope know anything about toothpaste? Let alone Miriam Zirium. <laughs> now, what do you think of this telegram to Roy? Well, let me see it. Roy K. McGee, Portland, Oregon. Your offer comes at difficult time as I have had several propositions from big syndicates in the East. Mm -hmm. What big syndicate? You ever hear of Frawley, Bullfinch, Hammer, Felton, Crump? <laughs> No, did you? No, did Roy? I see what you mean. Betcha. Well, now, let me see. It says here, however, family ties are stronger than mere money offers, so you may consider Portland deal okay with me. Please have small gymnasium and steam room installed in my office, as I believe an executive's keeping fit. Sign McGee. How's that sound? What's all that eyewash about executives like you keeping fit? Hmm? <laughs> Your idea of a day's workout is reaching for more marmalade at breakfast. Oh, I thought that was kind of impressive. They say Daryl Zanuck and some of those Hollywood big shots walk around all day swinging polo nibblicks and stuff. Mr. Zanuck is a polo player, dear. Mm -hmm. You're a gin rummy player. Mm -hmm. You can walk around swinging the ten of diamonds. Oh, well, what do you think of the telegram? Too long. What would you say? I'd say Mr. Roy McGee, Portland, Oregon. d locate, sign McGee. Hmm. That takes all the business-like stuff out of it. Cuts the horse feathers down to a quill, if that's what you mean. <laughs> Well, my gosh, businessmen like to hear things. Come in. Oh, good day, Mr. Wellington. Mm, my dear Mrs. McGee, you have no idea how much pleasure it gives me to see you again. And McGee, you have no idea. <laughs> Hi, Wellington. I shake hands with you, but you're a little out of reach up there on that high horse. <laughs> Musing fellow. Someday, old man, I should like to follow you around all day and take notes of everything you say. With what in mind, Mr. Wellington? To see if it looks as silly as it sounds. <laughs> ah, touche. What do you mean, touche? My hair is my own, and you know it. I, know. <laughs> I didn't say touche, dearie. I said touche. Huh? A French expression meaning you got me. Oh. Was there something we could do for you, Mr. Wellington? I will come directly to the point. How much do you want for it? For what? This house. I have it on very good authority that you are putting it up for sale. You see what I mean, Molly? Mert didn't waste any time. Isn't it wonderful? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Wellington. The house is not for sale as yet. Our plans are not fully matured. You see, Sig, I'm thinking of taking over a string of tanning factories up in Portland, Oregon. If I do, I'll naturally pull up stakes here, but I'll let you know, Sig. I have your word, then, that I may have first refusal? Absolutely, Wellington. <laughs> good, because I'd be the first to... Allow me to wish you every success in Portland, Oregon. Gone? Like a flash. <laughs> yeah. That's what a college degree does for some mugs, Molly. They spend the rest of their lives trying to make their heads fit those flat hats. <laughs> they, no. Hey, what kind of clothes do you wear in Oregon? Search me, dearie. It's warm out there, isn't it? Is it? I think the Japanese current goes past the coastline. Yeah, but how about after the war? Well, <laughs> what do you say we look it up? Hand me that encyclopedia. Here you are. Now, let me see. Portland, Portland. Mm -hmm. Here we are. <laughs> look, it's on the Columbia River. Ah, that's salmon country. Oh, I'm going to like that job. Go out in the morning with your fish pole and catch your salmon. Come back in the afternoon and can them. That's what I call a real... Hello, one. folks. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hi, boy. Mighty glad to see you, boy. Won't have much time to spend with each other from now on, boy. But it was swell knowing you, boy. Really swell. <laughs> Say, so what is this? Is he going to jail for a while, Molly? On the contrary, Mr. Wilcox, this is a cannery he's being thrown into. Yeah. String of canning plants up in Portland, Oregon, Waxy. <clears throat> Belong to my favorite cousin, Roy McGee. <laughs> Your favorite cousin? You always told me he was a no-good bum. Did I tell you he had a string of canning plants? No. Of course not. 
If I'd have known he was rich, he'd have been my favorite cousin long ago. <laughs> Incidentally, Junior, I might be in the market for a clean-cut lad like you, a sales manager. You ever think seriously of leaving the Johnson's Wax outfit? Nope. You wouldn't consider it, Mr. Wilcox? Nope. That's your last word? Yep. Haven't any more to, uh, I mean, now that the subject has been, uh, well, heavenly days, you usually... Haven't you got any message for us today, Waxy? Some little thing that'll brighten people's lives? Make them happier? Well, yes, I have. Oh. It's about V-mail. What do you mean, V-mail? Well, that's what I mean. When you write to any boy or girl in the service, use V-mail, because V-mail delivery is guaranteed. It saves precious cargo space, and it's the only kind of personal mail that's always sent overseas by air. Yeah, but what's V-mail got to do with Johnson's cell phone? Believe me, if you were a soldier in Australia, you got a letter inside of seven days, you'd really appreciate it. What the... That's what V-mail does. It moves. It literally flies. <clears throat> So when you write to your friends and relatives in the service, get some V-mail stationery at your druggist, stationer, or dime store. Address it correctly and completely, and you've guaranteed safe, fast delivery. I certainly don't know how he's ever going to tie that up with glow coat, McGee. He can't do it now. Remember, folks, like Johnson's self-polishing glow coat, spelled G-L-O hyphen C-O-A-T, every letter counts. Oh. Uh. <laughs> And you make yours count, too, when you use V-mail. Heavenly Daisy did it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you think you'll be a success in the canning business, pal? Why not? My cousin runs this thing. I don't have to work my way up. As soon as I'm in, I'm up. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, look, do you know anything about canning? Well, my experience has taught me one very valuable rule. What is that, sir? Never jab an opener into a can of tomato juice while wearing a white summer suit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... I take it the same rule applies to a can of mushroom soup while wearing blue serge. It <laughs> does, indeed. It does. <laughs> I shall keep you informed as to further suggestions, Junior. Pray do, and good luck with it, Canner. Thanks, Waxer. <laughs> uh, I'd like to have that boy in my organization. He's got brains and ambition. Doesn't smoke, drink, chew, nor watch the clock. Hey, where are you going, Molly? I'm going upstairs to look at the linen situation, oh. just in case we do go to Oregon. Don't forget to send the wire to Roy now. Oh, I won't. <laughs> ah, there goes a good kid. I know she thinks Oregon is full of Indians and grizzly bears. But does she squawk and complain? No, sir, not her. I can just see her standing there in the door of our cabin with a rifle. <laughs> While I run down the path to the canning plant. With the clean, sharp aroma of the pine woods and last year's salmon. <laughs> come in. Hi, mister. Ah, there, my dear. Do come in and sit down. Well, I was... Hmm? I said, do come in and sit down. After all, I may be gone a long time. And I should like to have only the pleasantest of memories of my little friends in Wistful Vista. Come, child, sit down. Okay, mister, I'll buy up the gimmick. <laughs> no gimmick, sis. I'm just in a sentimental mood, I guess. Mrs. McGee and I are going to Oregon. Oh. Huh? Hmm? What? Sure. Okay. <laughs> when you going, mister? Who's when you? Who's when you? Who's when you? No, that, 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 that. This summer, sis. End of June sometime. Get there just about the time the salmon are going upstream to palm their young. <laughs> To pawn their young. Salmon do that, you know. That's biological in a kind of a fishy way. <laughs> you see, sis, when a mama salmon wants the stork to bring her some little <clears throat> salmon, she fights her way upstream. Um, uh, why? <laughs> I don't know. Just life, I guess. <clears throat> All mothers have a kind of a shad row to hoe. <laughs> Give it. Anyway, when they get upstream, they start pawning their young. Gee, do they, honest? That's what they tell me. Oh. Pawning with salmon refers to the fact that the young salmon are left as security for the old folks, you see. <laughs> In fact, the original pawn shop symbol, sis, was originally meant to indicate three golden fish balls <laughs> made of salmon. <laughs> <laughs> Look, mister, hmm? in the first place, the salmon run doesn't start in June. Hmm? It starts in February, usually, and lasts through spring. Yeah, but what's Secondly, the... the older fish do not return to the spawning ground. Hmm? They usually die on the return trip to the sea. The young salmon, or par, 
We have in fresh water a year or two, and then they go to sea as smoke. Yes, Professor. In approximately another two years, they seek fresh water again. That's completing the cycle. Hmm? So save that blessed event stuff for people who believe in it, like Mr. Winkle. <laughs> The King's Men sing Billy Mills' song, The Sound Effects Man. Oh, what would we do without the Sound Effects Man, that radio rank and Tune your dial and listen a while, this is what you'll hear. There's a knock up on the door, that Sound Effects Man, hear the kids and maybe more. That Sound Effects Man, if you'd like a ring, he'll give you a ding, ding, ding. Even in the early morn, you'll hear him blow his horn. Cowboys galloping fit to bust. That's the sound effects man. Four more redskins fight the dust. That's the sound effects man. He has such an awful lot to do, and yet he very seldom ever misses a cue. He's a free alarm fire and the fire chief, too. That's the sound effects man. When the wind is howling. That's the sound effects man. Thunder goes a growling. The sound effects man. When the battle is raging, he's right in the middle of the fray. When he blows his whistle, crime doesn't pay. Then he's old Maxwell chucking right along. That's the sound effects man. When he tries to get the answer all wrong, stood him. That's the sound effects man. Hear those footsteps. Making a lot of muddy tracks. Straighten out that closet one of these days. Well, I sent the wire to Cousin Roy, Molly. I accept it. Aren't you glad? I don't know whether I am or not, dear. Your Oregon seems a long way away. Oh, you're going to love it out there. You know, Portland, Oregon raises some of the most beautiful roses in the in the country. Yeah, they'd almost have to with all those fish canneries, it seems to me. <laughs> Incidentally, I think Beulah's fixing trout for dinner. Oh, boy, trout. That's for me. How's Beulah fixing it? I'll see. Oh, Beulah. Somebody in here yipping for Beulah? <laughs> How are you fixing the trout for dinner, Beulah? Broiled with sketch butter. Mm. <laughs> sketch butter? Yeah, some butter's too scarce to draw. I just thought I got a sketch. <laughs> Got some news for you, Beulah. We're thinking seriously of going to Portland, Oregon this summer. Will you miss us? No, sir. What? You won't? No, ma'am. I'm going with you. Oh. <laughs> great, Beulah, great. Uh, what did your boy's friend say to that? Who, Waldemar? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was going to teach him a lesson, sir. Now, you know, we had a little set to the other night. Uh -oh. A set to? What about, Eula? Well, there's a big chair in my living room, and Walter must say, come here, gal, and sit on my lap. Mm. I said, no, and he said, why not? And I said, boy, that chair won't set but one. And he said, this chair set too easy. But it didn't, and I almost busted Walter's leg. <laughs> I see. Waldemar had a crush on you, and you had a crash on him. Look at the man on the crash on the crash on him. <laughs> Love that man. Well, uh, maybe a few months' absence will set Waldemar right, Hula. I hope so, ma'am. You know what you say is the trouble with women? No, what? Trouble. <laughs> Don't tell us Waldemar's a woman hater, Beulah. On the contrary, ma'am. On the con positively tre <laughs> He's too good looking to be a woman hater. What do you mean, Beulah? Well, sir, the proper ingredient for a woman hater are one good looking woman and one homely man. Mm -hmm. Man say hi, babe. Woman say go shopping yourself, skate. <laughs> <laughs> Result, one woman hater. Yeah. Well, let me know when you get ready to leave for Porter, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Another railroad fare to Oregon, McGee. I'll put that on the expense account. My gosh, Molly, think what my salary ought to be for managing six canning factories. One of them ought to pay ten thousand a year. Six of them would pay sixty thousand. 
Whew, wow, 60000 a year. Why, think of the income tax on that. Must be around 25000 Why, that's almost half. I won't pay it. By George, that's confiscatory. I'll take this case to the highest court. And... Come in. Oh, hello, doctor. Hello, Molly. Hello, worry wart. <laughs> Hi, Aerosmith. What are you scowling about? Taxes, doctor. Taxes? Yeah. What taxes has he got to worry about? He makes just enough to keep his head above water. And there are those who fail to see any necessity for that. <laughs> I'm not squawking about my present taxes, you big oaf. But I got a big job coming up in Oregon. Managing a string of canning factories for my cousin. Canning factories? Yes. Well, as the prince said when he first saw Cinderella, now there is one of my favorite subjects. <laughs> you managing a canning factory. <laughs> oh, now he can do it, Doctor. He can do it. You're darn mighty right I can do oh, it. Oh, Chutney. You couldn't manage an ice cream parlor at the North Pole. <laughs> Why, you'd have labor trouble with a marionette show. <laughs> It'd be like an Airedale running a flea circus. Is that so? Yeah. Why, you pompous old pill roller. When it comes to business, you got about as much head as yesterday's beer. You don't say. I do say. Well, look who's talking. Of all the inconsequential, inconsistent impersonators of industrial impresarios, you are without doubt the outstanding example of pragmatic ineptitude. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I'd gone farther in school. <laughs> I never know whether to take a bow or a sock at somebody. <laughs> the lack of a college education has probably saved you a lot of teeth, dear. Yeah. Molly, just what is this nonsense about him running some canning factory? It isn't nonsense, you lemon head. It's a fact. His cousin Roy in Portland, Oregon, wants us to move into his house this summer and take complete charge of all his canning. I'll handle the purchasing, sanitation, housing, welfare, work, and all stuff like that there. And he says if I make good, I can take my pick at the plants and he'll turn it over to me. There is something fishy about this, and I don't mean salmon. No. No, there isn't, Doctor. Show him the letter, McGee. Okay, there. Read that now, you big septic. All right. <laughs> Dear Fibber, my wife and I would like to take a well-earned vacation this summer and wonder if you would come to Oregon and keep an eye on things while we're away. Mm. As you may know, I have a string of very valuable canaries. Canaries. What? Read that again, Doc. You said canaries. That's what it says, canaries. Canaries. Oh. Let me see that letter. This is a canary. Oh, this is ridiculous. It does not say While I'm on the subject of spring house cleaning, let me say a word in favor of that good friend of all linoleum surfaces, Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Boards that have been regularly protected with glow coat can be crossed right off your list of extra chores. They'll take all the wear and tear that comes with the rains of spring and the dust of summer and come up smiling. Johnson's glow coat is a real labor saver because it needs no rubbing or buffing and takes a minimum of work to apply. And when you spill something, you mop it up in a jiffy with a damp cloth. If you have linoleum in your front entrance hall, brighten it up with an occasional application of glow coat. The colors will be as fresh as new again. A cheerful welcome to your friends. And for all floors made of asphalt tile, the approved polish is Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat. What are you doing, McGee? I'm writing a telegram to Cousin Roy in Portland. What are you saying? I say, is your letter impertinent and insulting? You are a cheapskate and a rat, and if you ever write to me again, I'll pin your ears back with your own bicuspids. <laughs> Warmest personal regards. Signed, Fibber. Very good. Day letter? Night. Night all. <laughs> The character of Mr. Wellington heard on this program was played by Ransom Sherman. This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax for Home and Industry, and inviting you all to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>